just let's let out a cry of worship this morning. He is so good. No matter what you may be facing today, He is still good. Oh, come on, church, if we will recognize how good He is in the middle of our problems. Those problems will fade from the forefront. They may be there, but His goodness will overshadow them. Jesus, you are so good. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Oh, come on, church, a little bit further. Let's go a little bit further this morning. Oh, come on, think about those words. God, you are so good. I am blessed. I am called. I am healed. I am whole. Oh, come on, someone needs to shout those words out this morning. I'm excited for what God is going to do in this place today. I believe that he has put this service together from the very beginning. I believe that he has stirred things in motion for weeks, for months, and something is going to happen today in the spirit. I believe chains are going to break in the spirit today. Shackles are going to fall from minds today. Jesus. get right into the word this morning. We're going to start with 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 9 and 10. It says, but ye are a chosen generation. Everyone say a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Say the people of God which had not obtained mercy, but have now obtained mercy. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Is anyone ready to become new today? Is anyone ready to set some things down today? Oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus, we come before you today with thanksgiving and with praise. God, we come before you in expectation, great expectation of what you're going to do in this place. Jesus, I ask that you would touch our hearts and our minds. God, that you would do a work in our minds today. Jesus, that you would anoint my lips, that you would help me as I preach your word. God, that your word come forth today and let it change our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise as you're seated. You may be seated. I apologize in advance if my voice gives out. I will admit to you, today has been a little bit different for me. I don't remember, except for visiting another church a few months ago, the last time that I have been in the congregation for a worship service. With the exception of special services since I've probably been about 13 or 14. And I thoroughly enjoyed it today, and my voice is shot because of it. (laughs) I normally sing and I play on the drums and I sing and all that stuff while I play guitar and I pray and all that wonderful stuff, but... My mind was telling me, oh man, <laughs> normally you can be quiet after that. Now you got to go preach. So please pray for my voice <clears throat> and the amount of water that I have left already. My title for today is, I think, simple but profound if you really think about it. It is, who am I versus who I am? There is a distinction between these two items. One is a question. One is a statement. There's difference between questions in our lives and statements 
in our lives. So this question, who am I? I don't know about you, but I have asked myself that question many times. Seems like a very simple question. Often we reserve that for children or, or teenagers or young adults. You know, you need to find who you are, right? And when you get to be a teenager and you get to be a young adult, you're trying to figure out, who am I? Who am I? You know, I have this from my parents. I have this from the people around me. And I have all these things I'm putting together to figure out, who am I? And for some crazy reason, the world expects us to know who I am. At, well, apparently all ages, but at 17, at 18, at, at all these, these years old. Thank you, Brother Angelo. I greatly appreciate it. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> but we, we think about these things and we get stuck, right? Plenty of times in my life I've been stuck on this. Who am I? And, you know, we see these times in our life when we're supposed to question this and figure it out. And then, you know, that usually that's early on, but then I've heard a lot about the midlife crisis, right? You get to this point in your life and you're like, what have I done? What have I achieved? Who am I? And it's almost this reevaluation of what am I, what am I doing with myself? Who, who am I? But so for the most part, we try to act like this question should only be at certain times in our lives. There should only be certain times in our lives that we struggle with who we are, according to what we portray, right? That's, that's what we like to say. But if we're truly honest, we struggle with it a lot more often than just those kind of key points of our lives. We could struggle with this every single day. We have this internal struggle in our minds, particularly even as Christians, of this who am I versus who I am. Maybe we feel like we don't struggle with it. Maybe we say, I know all the things I'm in God, so I'm okay. Maybe that was you. Honestly, if, I, if I'm deeply and truly honest with you, I feel like that was me until at least a couple years ago. And then all of a sudden, some things started swirling around, and, and maybe, you know, I feel like over this last couple of years, maybe just even this last year, has been a great losing battle with our minds. This year has been just the icing on the cake, hasn't it? I feel like there have been so many questions the last couple of years, and, and so many things come into play, and so many life changes for all of us in so many different ways, and then COVID was like, hey guys, here I am to make your life just that much more crazy. And this year, I feel like a lot of us have been losing that battle in our minds. And God has, I don't know so much that I would say put it on my heart all year as much as has allowed me to deal with it all year, or and I've allowed myself to deal with it all year, and we got to the start of this new year, and, and as a family, we sat down and we said, okay, enough is enough. This is ridiculous. As a family, we're already doing our family prayer time. As a family, we're going to sit down and we're going to do some Bible studies together on how to get control of our minds. So this week we started, and at the beginning of the week, and you know, I've read through some of the studies, and I've you know, been studying the scriptures and putting these things together in my mind, and and I was praying on Tuesday or Wednesday, and I believe God, God spoke this exact title to me. And I've been studying and thinking about it, and it's just, it's for, you know, it sounds kind of ironic, but mind-blowing a little bit. Just how much depth there is to our minds. How crazy our minds have, can be. How detailed, how intricate. Our minds are a battlefield. Everyone say a battlefield. This last year has brought those significant changes. Maybe beyond that, you've had changes. Things have happened in many of our lives that have turned our lives upside down. Things have happened that hadn't made sense. Maybe they haven't gone the way that we hoped for or even the way that we seemed to need them to go. We've had all these things that have maybe caused confusion in our brains how to deal with them. Every day we are faced with reality, negativity, confusion, fear, doubt, uncertainty, and the list is endless. Each of those things 
on top of whatever we may have already picked up in our lives, rages on. And it presents itself in this battlefield that is our mind. This battle rages on, often hidden in the background. Who am I against who I am? You know, our minds are intricate things. They can be used for some amazing things. You know, I, I'm blown away by inventions and, and things that human beings can come up with and, and make work. I mean, the very idea of an iPad, a cell phone, a microphone, all, all these things are just like, whoa. Somebody figured out with their mind, this stuff travels through the air, and we can use this, and we can communicate, and our, eyes are amaz- or our, our minds are amazing things, right? Our, our minds can also be used for some disastrous things. You think about the bombs and, and, and the wars and, and the terrible atrocities that humankind has committed against each other because of their minds. Our minds can promote courage or fear, confidence or self-hatred, hope or paranoia, angerness or hap- angry, being angry or having happiness, acceptance or neglect. The list goes on and on and on. It's both amazing, amazing to me and extremely saddening to me to know that our own minds can actually bring about our own sickness and even our own demise. Our own minds can cause us to get to a place where we feel lost. And a lot of this is tied up in this battlefield. So enough about the battlefield Enough about that. What do you do? What do we get do to get from who am I to who I am? You, you see the difference there? It's really simple, but who am I to this is who I am? We start with 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Everyone say, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. There are strongholds that we face, church. There are strongholds in our life, and a lot of times we use this scripture to talk about the strongholds that we face and that, that Satan pops up in front of us and the things that you know, come against us. One of the biggest strongholds in our lives is right here. It's a stronghold that's created not necessarily to keep things out, but to keep things in, to keep negative thoughts in. And, that, and the devil will use that very tool, that very stronghold in our own minds to say, no, 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 you can't get rid of that feeling. No, 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 no. I know who you are. No, you can't, you can't let go of that. You, you can't be that. Strongholds that, strap, that trap in worry and fear. But this scripture tells me exactly what I need to do with it. I need to cast down those imaginations. Whether you feel like it really is or isn't true, What you need to understand today is that anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, anything that exalts itself and says, I know more about God than about who you are, needs to be thrown down. Do you hear that, church? Anything that says, oh, no, God doesn't know who you are, God doesn't really know, that needs to be thrown down and stomped on a little bit and just says, no, sir, no, I am not that because God says, I am this. You really You really going to tell me, devil, that you know more than God? And sometimes, you know, we will get confrontational with the devil like that. Say, oh, no, no, you don't know. But then we let our mind go there. And we let our mind stay there. Church, when those thoughts pop up, you need to just remember. Maybe you need to pick something up. I don't know. Pick up a cough drop. That thought, that thought that says I'm stupid. No. No. The God of heaven made my mind. This thought that says I'm worthless? The God of heaven says I am priceless. 
This thought that says, oh, 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 there's all these things wrong with me. My family hates me. All this thing. No, oh, get out of here. Because my God says, you're in my hand. You are my child. I have created you for right now, this place. You are here for a reason. Oh, come on, church. Maybe it's crazy. Maybe you think I'm nuts. I don't really care. These are things I've been dealing with. I'm all alone. No, his, his wings overshadow me. He keeps me under the shelter of his wings. He walks with me through the valley of the shadow of death. Get that thing out of your mind and throw it down in the spirit. Oh, come on, church. We are a new creation. That scripture we opened with said, the old things are passed away and all things are become new. And you know what? Even when we do a good job and we bury that old man, we bury that old self, we bury those old ways, those old sins, those old habits, it's a whole lot harder to bury the thoughts. Because our mind is still there. You know, I, maybe, maybe this isn't just a coincidence, but it doesn't really talk about burying your mind, killing that old, that old self. It doesn't really talk about your mind. It talks about those, those ways, those things of the flesh. Because our mind isn't necessarily supposed to be killed. It's supposed to be renewed. It's supposed to take those things, throw them out, and put in the new. It's supposed to take those things that said, oh, no, these are all the reasons why I can't. And instead say, you know what? Those are all the reasons that I can share with somebody else. And say, this is where I was, but God brought me out. This is what I used to struggle with, but God brought me out. We can't forget it. Oh, but we can throw it down. And we can say, no, not today. I am not going to go there today. It's time we make a change in our minds. And we start tearing down the walls of those strongholds in our minds. And it's not enough to throw them down. They have to be replaced. It has to be renewed. And we do that by picking up the word of God and reminding ourselves, this is who I am. Ephesians 4, through 24 says that you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. This scripture reminds me that those thoughts, those issues, all of that is conversation of the old self. That's old conversation. That's the, that's, that's the old man talking. That's, that's my old self talking. My mind needs to be renewed. I believe wholeheartedly that's important to remember where God brought us from. But I also believe wholeheartedly that we need to leave what is in the past where it is. In the past. Gone. When, when God tells us to remember where he brought us from, he's not telling us that we need to spend every day in self-loathing and self-hatred over what has been done. He's saying, remember, remember where you were. I, I've got you. That, that was the old you. This is where you are now. Don't, don't dwell on that. Look at where I have brought you to. Look at where I have, what I've made from you. He wants to remind us that, yes, I died for you. Yes, I died for you. It is my righteousness. It is his righteousness on me. He took my weakness and said, here, use my strength. Not because you're pathetic, not because you're a loser, not because you're worthless. Throw that garbage out. 
He did it because he loves you that much. Because he said, this is my child dealing with this issue. That is my chosen creation. I am not going to let them down. I am not going to let them stay in this sin. I am not going to let them stay in that place. Church, we need to renew our minds. Romans 12, 12 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We're not going to be able to find what is the perfect will of God if our mind is not renewed. Church, this is a daily thing. It doesn't just switch over one day and become all sunshine and roses inside of our head, does it? No, it does not. It takes prayer. It takes fasting. It takes cutting certain words out of your life. If you have a problem with calling yourself stupid, I challenge you to drop that word from your vocabulary about everything this week, not just you. Don't talk about that stupid hamburger. Don't talk about that stupid coworker. Don't talk about that stupid car and stupid this and stupid that. Get rid of it. It's a lot harder to call yourself names if you don't have a whole arsenal stocked up. Right? So start weeding them out. When you say something, ask yourself. Would God say that about me? Would God say that about this situation? No? Okay. Well, then I guess I'm going to try not to say that about this situation. Then I guess I'm going to... Don't put it back in your mouth. Can't bring it back. Just leave it. Throw it away. Throw it away. See what happens. We need to replace those thoughts. It's not enough to just empty it. We have to replace those thoughts. Philippians 4, eight. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, that is what we're supposed to think about. This is what we need to be thinking about. The next time that question comes up of, who am I? and we start going down some dark path or our damaging thoughts, you need to replace it with something good. Are you feeling unloved? My Bible tells me about a God that loved me before I was even born. Are you feeling worthless? My Bible tells me of a Savior that was nailed to a tree because he thought I was priceless. My Bible tells me of a God that has not given me the spirit of fear but of power and of a sound mind. Are you feeling angry? My Bible tells me of a God that has joy unspeakable. My Bible tells me that if I've been hurt, I feel hurt. He is a God that binds the wounds of the broken and sets the captives free. That's what my Bible tells me. But you can't be ready with those things that your Bible tells you if you're not reading it. You can't combat that thought of negativity with the Word of God if you don't know the Word of God. Church, we need to be in the Word every single day. Memorize that scripture. If you struggle with certain things, if you struggle with fear, memorize Psalm 23. And the next day you're having an anxiety attack and you're, and you're afraid and you're scared, start quoting that scripture and see what happens. The next day, you're caught in turmoil in your mind, and you just can't figure out which way to go. Oh, his word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. I have never seen his seed begging for bread. I don't know what to do in this situation. I feel like I'm, um, I'm just lost. I'm just in this place, and, and I don't know where to go. God, I, I can't provide. Oh, but I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I clothe the sparrows. I clothe the grass. You think I'm not going to take care of you? Church, these are the things that need to start flowing from us. These are the things that need to start going into and out of our minds.
For every negative thing that we are thinking about ourselves, there are dozens of scriptures in the Bible that say otherwise. Replace it. The next time you're there, stop yourself. Pick up your cell phone, open the Bible app, and do some searching. There's all kinds of useful tools. There's even a section in my Bible app that says, how are you feeling today? Anxious? Here's some scriptures. Here's some scriptures against anxiety. You're feeling unloved? Here's some scriptures about how much God loves you. Church, we have all the tools at our disposal. There is no excuse. There is no excuse for us to not do this. There is no excuse for us to continue to allow ourselves to beat up ourselves. I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, and you all can tell me if, you're, if I'm wrong, but I feel like this church struggles with insecurity. I, I mean, I'll be blunt with you. I struggle with insecurity, and I'm part of the church, so... The church struggles with insecurity. But I don't think it's, I don't think it's just me. I, I think this goes forward into a lot of us. And we're, we're scared to do things for God because, well, I'm just this quiet, quiet, meek person. There's nothing wrong with being quiet and meek. There's nothing wrong with being extroverted and bold. I have to throw that out there for my wife. But here's the thing, though. You can be quiet and meek, or you can be extroverted and bold and still be insecure. And you can be quiet and meek and extroverted and bold and still be bold in who Jesus has made you to be. Oh, come on, church. Let that flip a light switch in your mind. It's not about I have to become the most extroverted person in the world. No, 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 no. It's about I need to say I am bold in Jesus because he says this is who I am. He says this is what I have made you to be. We are his chosen creation. We are his children. I am a man saved by grace, purchased with his blood. Don't waste your time fretting over or focusing over what you don't want to be. See, that's the other problem, right? Anybody that has any kind of introspection whatsoever is going to say, well, I don't want to be that. So I'm going to make sure I'm not that. And the funny thing about, well, not funny thing, the sad thing about focusing on not becoming that is you're focusing on that thing to not become it. Instead, we need to retool our mind and say, well, if there's something that I don't want to become, what's, what's the opposite of that? So I don't want to become an angry person. So I'm going to become a joyful person. So I'm going to focus on joyful things. I'm going to focus on things that, that bring joy to my spirit. I'm going to focus on the joy of the Lord because that's what gives me strength. You don't want to become a bitter person? Stop focusing on not becoming a bitter person. Because you know what happens? It makes you bitter about, not, about being bitter. And I, I no, right? We're laughing about this, but how, this goes through my mind. This goes through your mind. I'm going to be honest with you. I studied this all week long. And yesterday I went to the church to work with the pastor. And the first two hours I was there, he didn't really say anything. But he knew something was wrong. I was totally off worrying because I just felt alone. And for me, that immediately goes into, what's wrong with you, Rick? That's stupid. You're not alone. You have your family. Your family loves you. This is ridiculous, man. Stop worrying about it. Which then makes me angry. Which then makes me upset because I'm angry. 
which then makes me quiet and moody, which then makes everybody around me quiet and moody and worried, and then that makes me angry because now everybody, I've upset everybody, and you see how far away from the start I've gotten? And I had to stand myself up on that ladder as I was scraping insulation off the wall <laughs> and say, no, I'm not alone. This is what the Bible says about me. See, it is, it is great to have people in your life that can help with this. And it's great for me to be able to say, I, I know I'm not unloved. I have a family that loves me. But that's not enough. It has to be from him. Because we're human beings. We're going to do things. We're going to do things that make other people feel like they're not loved. Families. Anybody ever have an argument? Oh, I thought my wife was raising her hand. I was like, really? Come on. Pastor, I have to confess, I told Erica last night that I'm going to quit preaching because every Saturday before I preach, we have some kind of big discussion. And I was like, man, there must be something wrong with me. And I had to start over and say, no, 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 no. We're not going down that path. I thought you all would appreciate that, though. She seems to think that I cause a lot of the arguments, but... I'm not an arguer, not, not at all. I don't build my case. I don't have backup information. <laughs> That's just not me, uh-uh, no. We're families, and you know, even really, 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 really good families have disagreements, because those minds of ours, right? <laughs> They think differently. And what, what, there's this thing I know about the human race is we don't like different. There's a, there's a lot of wars and all kinds of chaos that's been started because of different. <laughs> and, that, and that will happen sometimes in our families or our close friends. And maybe, maybe there are points in our lives where we can't, without a shadow of a doubt in our minds, say I know that my family loves me, so I am loved. Maybe we don't have that. But we do have that with our Heavenly Father. We do have that with the one who created us. We do have that with the one that's been through us, with us through the thick and through the thin, that has bailed us out and has watched us fall flat on our face to bail us out again. We can know without a shadow of a doubt that he still loves us. So it's important, and, and I don't know, this was kind of a sidebar. It's important that we don't just get focused on, well, I have this around me and my friends and my family. Because that's great, but you need deeper. You need deeper. You need the one that created that mind of yours. You need the one that speaks a word and it becomes so. You need that one that can calm the raging seas. As much as I absolutely love my wife, I love, love my family, I, I don't have that power. You know, I'm a pretty good listener. I'm pretty good at figuring out some stuff. I'm pretty good at helping people through things. But there are a lot of things I can't even begin to touch. I can't even begin to get through in them or me, my own things. And while we need that on this physical earth, we need those people around us. We need the, you know, if you have a brother or sister you can talk to and trust, then do it. Then do it. <laughs> but we need to remember that at the very core of all of that needs to be Jesus. It needs to be his word. Because unlike people, his word doesn't change. See, I can look back five years, ten years, and say, well, those are my friends five and ten years ago, and they're different now. I'm different than I was ten years ago. 
So people change. But the word of God? Mm -mm. Maybe somebody did stop loving you. But my Bible doesn't talk about that. He talks about a God that died on Calvary for my sins. He loved me that much. Maybe, maybe somebody does make you angry. My Bible talks about a God that is full of joy unspeakable. You see where I'm going with this? We need to be in the Word, church. Romans 8, 37 through 39. It says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, and I think that includes our mind, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's what God's word says. Nothing can separate us from him. Why don't we all stand this morning? Church, if you're hearing this message, if you're watching online, wherever you are, let it start today. I've already told you, I'm not naive. If Brother Dion could just come this morning. I'm not naive, okay? I'm probably not dealing with the same things individually as you are, and you're not dealing with the same thing, but I struggle with this. So I'm not standing up here telling you, I've got it all figured out and I'm perfect. And this is how you do it. I'm right there with you. But I'm saying, I do see the light. I do see where to go. So come with me. Is that okay? Is that okay if I spiritually grab you by the hand and say, hey, I'm struggling too? Come on. Church, we need to watch out for our brother and our sister. The devil would like nothing more than to divide us. So if you're getting some things in your mind and you're causing a division between you and a brother and sister, start start working through it. Be there. Be there for each other. Church, we have each other. We have the greatest opportunity. we, We may have our own individual families or we may not, but we have this church family. We need to pray for each other. Maybe you can't be there physically. Maybe we can't really gather together right now because of COVID or all that stuff, but that sure does not stop us from praying. If you know a brother or sister is struggling with something, pray for them. Focus on that person for a week and see the difference that it makes. Focus on praying for that person and and challenging yourself and saying, I'm... I'm going to get rid of these things inside of me. I'm going to replace that with the words of God. This morning, I would really love to see all of us find a place in prayer. This altar is open if you can space out. If you're more comfortable in your pew, it doesn't matter. Don't hold back today, church. Start today. If you need to weep before the Lord this morning, if he's pricked your heart like I think he has and you need to let out a good cry, then do it. I have an answer for you. Well, if I cry, people are going to think I'm strange or something's wrong with me. You know what my Bible says? He catches my tears in a bottle. That's how important it is to him. That is how important it is to God. This church will break this yoke of depression. This church will break this yoke of insecurity. But it starts with me and with you. It starts with us allowing Jesus to do it for us individually. Who I am is a man with a renewing mind. Who I am is a husband and a father that is going to allow Jesus to retool my brain and make me what he has planned for me. What are you? What are you? Church, let's take some time. Let's pray. Let's let's cast those things out of our mind. Let's put those good things in our mind. Let's, Let's prophesy a little bit and just say, this may be who I am now, but this is who God has called me to be.
Maybe you are broken. Maybe you are a broken husband or a broken wife or a broken father or a broken mother. Cast it out. In Jesus' name, you are a healed mother. In Jesus' name, you are a healed wife. You are a healed woman. You are a healed man. Oh, come on, church. Pick this up for yourself. Pick this up for yourself. Let's cast down these things in the name of Jesus. Let's pick up the right things in the name of Jesus this morning.
lift our voices all over this congregation. We just praise God and thank Him for touching us today. Hallelujah. We need to receive this. Where this church is going, we need to receive this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I worship you, God. I praise you, Lord. God, I pray over this congregation that this word that has been given to us today would stick in our hearts and our minds. That like a wave across this congregation and across this church, even those who cannot physically be here today, God, but that it, like a wave it would come across us, that we realize the power that's in our mind, the power that's in the blood, the power that's in the word. And we match them together in our being, and we come up out of this pit. Lord, we come up equipped, we come up ready, we come up called, we come up sent. In the name of Jesus, I pray over this congregation and over every mind that's heard this message and that will hear this message in the future. God, that you would just open up that vision. Open up, God, what you've put in their hearts. Let them see it. Let them embrace it. God, entrust you for the power to go through. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name. Let's worship God right now. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I had announced that we were going to kick off our building fund effort this week, but I'm going to wait one more week for that. I appreciate every one of you being here and all that you do for the church. Amen. I'm excited about what God is doing. Amen. I said it last week, and everything's changed again. So if you haven't been by the property in a while, you need to drive by. It's shocking. <laughs> a lot is happening. Amen. It's just uh, very exciting what is going on. Amen. I would uh, ask if, if you're available during the week, please let me know. Amen. We're going to have some, some work going on, and of course, this coming weekend. So if you're available this coming weekend, uh, please let me know. We're going to be probably putting up some drywall in the, the one hall. We had to make some repairs and some different things. So if you're available for that uh, for any time on Saturday, please let me know as soon as you can so 